Hi folks, so just a, another little uh, flat earth video. Thank you very much uh, to the people who've uh, commented on my other one and the corrections that they give me. That's that's great. Um, one of the things I missed out when describing rockets flying off the earth was of course orbital entry. Um, which, yeah, you need to kind of turn uh, sideways to the earth, parallel to the earth almost, uh, in order to enter orbit. Anyway, um, just one other thing I wanted to mention that um, some flat earthers talk about is people being upside down in Australia, boats uh, going around the equator being on their side, uh, the water not falling off the southern hemisphere, um we are we are born as humans into a world into a perspective that there is up and down the ground is down the sky is up um so that is our very small per percep perception that we have um in our lives and then of course we have maps um, which they, when they're created, they're drawn, they put north at the top and they put south at, at the bottom. A globe, normally, representation of the earth will have north at the top and south at the bottom. Um, something to do with more people living in the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere or uh, explorers coming from the northern hemisphere. Anyway, um, the point is that equating these two things, equating the fact that we have an up and down, and that's practical for us from our small perspective, that then when we look at a map of the earth or we look at a globe, that north must therefore be up and south must therefore be down is, uh, is very wrong to equate those two things. Because in space there is no up or down. Everyone on the earth is being pulled towards the center of the earth, whether they are in Antarctica or whether they are at the North Pole, they're being pulled towards the center of the earth. Um, there is no gravity separate from the earth under the South Pole that is pulling the earth <laughs> down the way and therefore should be pulling people off the earth in the south pole or pulling the water off the earth in the south pole to somewhere else uh, everything is being pulled in towards the center on the earth um, it is convenient for us to to have the north and south pole the north being up and south being down uh, in order for navigation or just for um, using you know using maps or uh, getting to know geography things like that that's that's very uh, useful for us to know which way we're going etc but in space the only down is if we're being pulled towards the center of a, a planet um, someone standing on the south pole really relative to anything else could say that they are up um, someone standing at the equator could be looking down at the rest of the earth. Someone standing in the North Pole could be looking down at the rest of the earth. Um, to think that there is some kind of separate gravity to pull people from the south side, uh, the, so the southern hemisphere, down. Um, I don't want to say small-minded. I don't. It's it's a limited perspective of what of uh, what up and down is. So <clears throat> I think that's an important, you can't use that as an ex, uh, a reasoning why it can't be a globe. That there can't be things on the side or there can't be things on the bottom. There is no side, there is no bottom. Yes, of course, we have the North and South Poles. Um, the, the Earth spins around that axis. Um, but everything, no matter where they are in the spin, no matter where they are in the globe, is being pulled toward the center. Um, therefore, they are all on top, all on the side, all on the bottom. Um, it's just a matter of perspective.
it is all relative um, so I hope that I hope that makes sense um, maybe I haven't explained it properly um, so please go ahead and correct me um, but um, that's that's how I understand it anyway the, the globe model um, it makes sense to me um, one other thing just mention about the stars that if we are flying through, we're, we're orbiting the, the sun, but the sun is also orbiting within the Milky Way. Now, all the stars that we see in the sky are in the Milky Way galaxy. We can, of course, see Andromeda, um, and we can see other galaxies using telescopes and stuff. But the stars that you see in the sky, with your eyes, are in the Milky Way galaxy. So, we are all spinning in the Milky Way galaxy why don't stars change their position during the year or why don't they change position over years when we are all moving so f when we're moving so fast well that's the answer is because we're all moving so fast and the stars are so far away and um, the closest star to earth is 25 trillion miles away um, so you know if you're in a car and you're looking out the window, the things closer to you, to the car, move seem to move faster than the things further away. Um, that's just perspective. And so the stars don't seem to change within our very short lifetimes um, because not only are we all moving together in the Milky Way, but we're also very, very far away from them. And over millennia, the stars do change positions, and even the North Star will change. Um, so, okay, I think I'll, I'll leave it there. And um, if you want to ask me any questions, you can. But I think that's probably covered everything about the Flat Earth reasoning that um, that I wanted to, to say. Um, the things about the show me the curvature, etc., well, you just have to go high enough. No, even if you use a proper camera and <laughs> without a fisheye lens, you just have to go high enough and you will see the curve. Um, so I'm hoping that um, Mr. Sensible's uh, project that he uh, tried to do to have the camera to go up um, to take photographs, I hope that he can get that going again and show the curve. Um, so thank you for listening to me. Love you all and please be kind to each other. Bye.